Okay, where we're at today is essentially a pre and post example of the hamstring force and torque uh, test done after an intervention of the RPR reset. You can find more information at reflexiveperformance.com. I appreciate my assistant putting these slides together uh, and uh, officially doing the testing on the particular subject. Um, first of all, I uh, want to make sure you understand what a Nord board is. Um, basically, the athlete does a test and then he lowers himself down and the these devices here are probably strain gauges that are actually uh, registering in Newton's how much uh, force the, uh, the hamstrings are able to apply during the test and then they will come back up. So with that being said, we'll get on from there um basically what we had was an athlete post acl tear this athlete ex-athlete now tore uh left acl in june of 202 had surgery in december of 215 uh, and then we did this intervention of the rpr reset a year and a half after the injury performed inconsistent rehab for three months post december um, of 215 after surgery and then just basically stopped due to constraints the order of events we have here is athlete performed hamstring test on the Nord board, then did an RPR reset, and then we retested them that day, and then we retested two days later. And what we have here is a time in regards to the duration of the test and then the force. So the orange leg is the right leg, the healthy one, the left leg was the ACL with the uh, um, obviously the deficit. So what we had going into this was a 300 newtons of force was the max force applied and then 200 newtons of force in the pre-test of RPR reset. So you can see there's about a 60, 6 to 70 percent difference in the variations of uh, the, the right versus left leg in the hamstring. So then what we had was an um, RPR that day. So the RPR session, it, they did a full reset um, and what transpired was we essentially got a uh, huge response out of the bad hamstring and also the good hamstring. Actually, these responses were about equal, but obviously they were at a deficit to start. So this is a uh, pretty good response to say the least, especially regarding uh, preventing hamstring uh, issues with that particular bad leg. Um, you can see the differences here. I'll let you, uh, this is official, uh, the numbers that we, re we uh, got. But you can see how these numbers go. I'll let you pause this if you need to look at it anymore. Now, what uh, the crazy thing was, was the pre-RPR that took place. Um, this is the original pre. And then what happened after two days without any more interventions was that the hamstring with the correct firing patterns being put into place by the RPR reset, the, the bad hamstring started at 200 and went up to above where the good healthy hamstring was and the healthy hamstring kept going up also so there's still a deficit there's still some work to be done but what we did was we increased um, roughly the bad leg by about 30 percent over a course of a two day okay so again you have the post rpr versus the tuesday two day so this um the first intervention was right here the the pre-test this was the 40 minutes later after the RPR and then this was roughly two days and you can see the athlete still gets better after the two days um, because of the right sequencing and the body's actually starting to heal itself. So what we have um, is you can see all the results here but ultimately you can see that we have uh, um, some huge differences and what you can tell is that RPR is a very effective tool for hamstrings and I believe you will uh, you'll find the same results with uh, with a lot of people in this situation as long as there's not much pain.